I've been teaching the LSAT for almost 20 years now, and 2024 was the year we saw the biggest LSAT changes ever in my career. LSAC removed the logic game section and replaced it with a second scored logical reasoning section. However, there are some unexpected changes as well that were unannounced regarding the logical reasoning section that I'll walk you through in just a moment. But first, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Steve Schwartz. I've been teaching the LSAT since 2005, and I personally increased my LSAT score from a 152 to a 175. Now, LSAC agreed to remove the logic game section as the result of a lawsuit from blind test takers who sued them, contending they were at an unfair disadvantage because they couldn't benefit from diagramming in logic games the way other test takers could. LSAC settled the lawsuit and agreed to develop a new version of the test without the then current logic games section. So we have here LSAC agreeing to change the test because of blind test takers who couldn't benefit from diagramming in the logic game section. So LSAC agreed to remove logic games and replace it with a second scored logical reasoning section. However, we got reports from students who took the August LSAT, and we've been getting several reports for over the past several months that LSAC is testing out more questions on the logical reasoning section involving formal logic more questions involving conditional reasoning where diagramming would likely be useful. And so here we have LSAC exploiting a loophole in their joint settlement agreement. If you look at the joint press release between LSAC and the plaintiff's attorneys, we have LSAC committing to complete research and development into a new version of the test over the course of four years from fall 2019 to fall 2023. LSAC did conduct that research and they did ultimately change the LSAT. But we do see more questions on formal logic, more questions on conditional reasoning in the new scored portions of the LSAT starting this past August, as well as a whole lot more of these questions in experimental sections, which indicates LSAC will be testing out these questions even more on scored portions of the LSAT going forward. Now, when I say formal logic, when I say conditional reasoning, what exactly do I mean? I mean logical reasoning stimuli, meaning the short paragraph that contains lots of concrete logic games type statements where diagramming would likely be useful. Questions involving conditional statements, meaning if X, then Y, you're taking contrapositives, you're linking things together, you're making inferences, making connections. If you want examples of what I'm talking about, I'll share a couple of them in just a moment. Note that these will be on the old LSAT numbering system from 1 to 94, just because I'm personally more familiar with this numbering, that's the notes that I have. If you'd like, you can simply Google the question topic to find the citation for it or the reference for it in the new prep test numbering format from 101 to 158. We have here from prep test 30, an inference question about inspired musical performances where drawing conditional statements, linking things together would likely be useful. We have a question from prep test 44, a flaw question testing your understanding of numbers versus percentages. This is a question involving Clara Schumann who plays the piano. We have a question from prep test 53, a parallel reasoning question about April rainfall where diagramming would likely be useful. And we have a question from prep test 58, sufficient assumption involving handmade wigs. Now for all of these, making some kind of diagram would likely be helpful. Is it absolutely necessary? Of course not. But even LSAC themselves would have said that for logic games, diagramming is not absolutely necessary, even though for 99% of people, it's going to test the limits of their short-term working memory sufficiently to the point where you can't hold all that information in your head and you're going to want to make a diagram. So that's why I say LSAC is exploiting a loophole here by testing the concepts formerly tested in logic games now on the logical reasoning section. Will we see a new lawsuit? Too early to say. In the meantime, you're going to want to brush up on these concepts. You're going to want to study them closely if you're taking the LSAT in September or beyond. Now, if you would like my help, if you're taking the LSAT at any point in the near future, there are a wide variety of ways that I could support you. At LSAT Unplugged, we offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, 
and one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can check out the links below to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. Now, these concepts I'm talking about here, these have always been on the LSAT. The first example I gave from Prep Test 30, that's going back 25 years already. And so LSAC is correct. They are telling the truth when they say that they are not testing out some new question type here. These questions have always been on the LSAT, but we're going to see a whole lot more of them than we did in the past in the near future. Now, the questions I gave examples of, again, inference question, flaw question, parallel question, and sufficient assumption question. You don't want to spend too much time on these, but you do want to spend a bit more than previous LSAT prep tests would have indicated. The most common types of questions on logical reasoning are inference questions, flaw questions, and necessary assumption questions. So make sure that you master these before you spend time on the less common types like sufficient assumption. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.